Hi everyone, welcome to the Render Media Vlog where we talk everything business and marketing. With me here today, I have Elvira Caria, radio personality. Elvira, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my God, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for having me. Now, Elvira, let's start from the beginning of your career. How did you get started in radio? Okay, well, I began in media actually, which uh, 30 plus years ago, so stop doing the math already because we don't need that, it's not necessary. I started very young, let's say that. Um, I was actually a uh, Toronto Sun reporter. So I started off in print, I have a journalism background, but I actually knew way before even I, I even did that, that that is what I wanted to do. I think from a very young age, I always was one of those kids that asked the why. I needed to know why and I needed, I was always seeking the truth. And, uh, and so when I announced at a very young age I wanted to be a journalist, my family just kind of rolled their eyes and said, yeah, no kidding. So yeah, and that's, that's what I did. Interesting. So you followed your passion. I followed my passion. I followed what I think I was intended to do for a very long time. And as careers do, they bring you to different pathways and you decide which way do you want to go and, and life can change once you decide that. So tell us how did you get started in your career with school and then your, your actual job? Okay, so um, you know one of the things that I always tell people is um, you're not going to get your dream job the minute you get out of school. That, that's ridiculous to think that, it's a bit arrogant quite frankly, but it's a great thing nowadays and it's called a pass. And, uh, and that pass in that building gets you to all the departments that you ever want. So take a job within what, you know, where you ideally would love to work and start working your way up into that department that you want to work in. That's exactly what I did with the Toronto Sun. I took a, a job that I knew I was never going to get into the newsroom um, right out of school. And I took a job being a, um, well back then we actually had newspapers that were delivered. So I was a delivery manager. And within a year, I just kind of hustled and worked my way up to the uh, newsroom and introduced myself a lot to uh, the reporters and who ultimately became my news editor, which is Lori Goldstein. And he hired me. Interesting story. Yeah, he took a chance on me and I, and I will forever be grateful for that. Yeah. And now let's talk about one of your career highlights. Can you pick one? Okay, I don't know if it's necessarily a highlight or if it sounds a little bit morbid, but as a journalist, you always want to cover, you know, the lead story or whatever it is that that topic that you're talking about of the day. Um, besides politics, I really hyper-focused a lot. I spent a lot of my journalism time in uh, courtrooms, and uh, one of the one of the coverages that I, I you know, was mandated to cover was um, the Carla Hamoka pretrial. So that was uh, that was hard. That was devastating. But um, to me, as a journalist, I think it was really necessary to sort of, as much as we could, with all the publication bans that occurred at that time, you know, tell the truth and and, and have the public understand what was going on in the courtroom at that time. Yeah, it was really important. That must so that's have been a, a highlight. Difficult, uh, difficult uh, case. Yeah, you know, you you have to learn throughout the years. So that was, you know, by then I was quite heavily involved in uh, as a reporter. Um, I think you just have to learn to kind of, you know, separate the two. I covered lots of uh, missing children who ultimately, you know, um, passed away or were found murdered. So you have to learn to sort of disconnect. And then once I had my child, I think that I kind of broke down and I decided, eh, I got to get into something a little more fun. And that's when the sort of on-air personality side of me took over. So let's talk about that more fun side of your sure. career. Tell yes. us, you were on radio, which yep. network, how many years? Oh my goodness gracious, I think I've, I've been in radio um, many, many years and like, like that, even though I was a uh, seasoned reporter, print reporter, once breaking into the radio industry, I had to start over again because that's what you do. You're starting a, a whole new medium, you're starting a whole new field quite honestly. And, uh, and I paid my dues like everybody else. So I started in Bayshore Broadcasting, which was uh, up north in uh, Owen Sound, and kind of worked my way down, the, uh, worked my way down the, the coast, if you will. So that was Collingwood, Rock 95 and Barry. worked in Hamilton, worked, oh my goodness gracious, I worked everywhere. And then ultimately the GTA is the goal. And I worked at Q107 and uh, Z1035. Well, you certainly have a very, very impressive career. Yeah, um, I loved it. <laughs> let's and talk I love about, it. Let's fast forward to today. Sure. So the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, always uh, hits. And I'm a very, very strong believer that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, especially in this extremely fluid 
um, world of social media now and um, and just the way things, the dynamics of the way the world works nowadays. And I think if you're a one-trick pony, I don't think you're going to survive um, in this day and age. I think that you need to really learn to be versatile. You really learn or you have to learn to be adaptable to whatever it is that's changing. Again, it's a, a very fluid world. Things are ever changing and, uh, and you have to reinvent yourself to make sure that you're always relevant. I think that that is the key. You have to make sure you're relevant. Yeah. Well, that's some great advice for yeah. the, uh, the youth and the future of media. Yeah, don't be a one-trick pony. Some people, some people kind of say to me, no, uh, then you're splitting your, your, um, you know, your attention. But that's not true. That's, that's ridiculous to think that. You, you, can be, you can do more than one thing and do great things at more than one thing. I'd like to think I'm a testament of that anyway. Yeah. And now on the topic of advice. Ah. Anything else you'd like to leave with youth coming into this industry? Yeah, uh, especially youth. I mean, I, I don't know if you know that I teach the radio and uh, media production at Humber. And one of the things that I love to do, I never say I teach my students, I always say that I'd like to mentor them. Because one of the things that I always want to mentor and let them leave knowing that, you know, it's okay to change your mind. You start off thinking you're in one pathway, but then something may strike you along the career that says, you know what, I want to do this. You know, you're not married to that aspect of your career. That, that's what makes it beautiful, is that things happen in life and just change. But whatever it is that you're doing, you have to love what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a job, not a passion, not a career. And to me, I just, I can't imagine anybody doing something that they don't love to do on a daily basis. There you have it, guys. Love what you do. You heard it here from Elvira. Elvira, thanks for coming on. We could keep talking for, for so long, and we will. We'll have you back on again. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank All right, you. everyone, radio personality Elvira Caria. Tune in next time.